Bucket dies. Oh, Bucket was the only character I liked in this story. <laughs> Hello, friends. My name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator. Welcome to Firewatch. Um, apparently this is like a narrative sort of story, mostly. Just gotta walk around, look for some fires, stuff like that. Make sure ain't nothing happening. I've never played the game before, so we will be going in completely blind. What piqued my interest about it is that, uh, Camp of Santo, who is the developer, was acquired by Valve. So I wanted to see what makes this game great, uh, why did it get so big despite the relatively high price tag and low playtime. I know it does have a few negative reviews because of that, and, um, yeah, I'm just quite curious as to what made the game so great that Valve decided that they had to acquire this this indie studio. And Campo Santo also shit on PewDiePie. They're like, we're gonna file some copyright claims against PewDiePie's episodes of Firewatch, so I don't expect these episodes to do uh, exceedingly well as far as views or anything like that, because, I mean, this game is fucking old as hell by now at least in the internet time. But yeah, my curiosity compels me, so we're gonna see what it do. You see Julia. No, I don't. I see fucking orbs floating through the air. I don't know what's happening. Oh, I see Julia. Okay. Fact. Yes, I do. <laughs> what the fuck? She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. That's not my name at all. I still gonna approach her and tell her my name's Henry, because I like lying. <laughs> you are drunk. Uh, what's your major is probably the one to open with. You can tell a girl that she's pretty right off the bat, but then you're setting a precedent that really you probably don't want to end up setting, you know. Then you put yourself lower, you know, than her, which is not a good way to start. So what's your major? Bitch. <laughs> you slur the word major and it smells like Coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Ah, ah, ah. Because I farted. <laughs> it didn't say that, but I totally did. Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurts your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. No, Julia is my girlfriend. <laughs> There's a big difference there. <clears throat> so, okay, super. That's uh, that's a start, isn't it? I'm gonna pick up my backpack. I'm gonna uh, press some buttons in the elevator. Ain't nowhere to escape. Hey, this is my parking garage. I've been here before. That's my truck, I think. Should I bring any of these cinder blocks? Beat myself to death? Alright, let's get in. You can put the backpack in the passenger seat. You don't gotta throw it in the back. You date for over a year! She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. What the fuck? You, you, got, you got some issues to work through, if that's how you feel. You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. You're also alcoholics. <laughs> Julia wants to get a dog. Oh god. Why? There's a scruffy undersized beagle. Julia's in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an, an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while she's walking this dog. It's badass. I take the beagle. I like little dogs, you know? You got a big dog, then, yeah, it's gonna fucking yank your arm off on a leash. If it's not well-trained, I mean... Yeah, it's just easier to control little dogs. And the shepherd's gonna be named Mayhem? Fuck that. <laughs> that's that's not gonna be good. Let's take the beagle and name him Bucket. Yeah. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you totally forgot about the other one. Julia loves him. I love him, too. Good boy, Bucket. That's the best name for a dog. I like that bucket. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Um, kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. I think that would be pretty good. I'm into that. 
If you would have talked to me a couple of years ago, I would have been like, I don't know. But once you meet the right person, it's totally, it's totally in the cards, you know? You're just like, yeah, definitely. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I'd like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You are absolutely right. Now you've just ruined the chance for, for uh, the man to propose to you. What the fuck is going on in this game? <laughs> Already, I, I see some strange things in the narrative. But okay. Hey, we're in the woods now. Thoroughfield Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Learn to live with bears. Don't forget to check in. No fireworks. Alright, great. Two forks. I don't know where I am, so I'll just wander into the woods. That always seems like a good idea, doesn't it? <laughs> so here we are. Our pro-feminist walking simulator. <laughs> it's Thursday night and Julia's four hours late. She doesn't call. You're getting worried and angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. What's your problem, bitch? I thought you bitched ten years ago, bitch. <laughs> she's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Yeah, I'll just ignore her. Whatever. It's not worth investing energy over, obviously. You wanna go suck some strange dick? Alright, pack your shit. Get the fuck out. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. Yes, I do. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Hi, He-Man. Hi, He-Man. You look awesome. Alright. Yeah, I do. And I also jump off of cliffs. Alright, no going back that way. We're stuck in the woods now. What's that? Yucca plant? No, that's just a fallen tree. Okay. Super. Hey, Super Duper. We're setting you up with a backstory. As soon as you get to that sign, we're going to cut to another little, uh, whatever. Two Forks Fire Lookout, 8 miles. Hey, 8 miles? It's only getting a little dark. Space bar to climb over obstacles? Yeah, that's about what I expect. The sun is high in the sky. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking Bucket at night. Yay, Bucket! He's still alive! There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Wonderful! Throw the dog at him. Bucket gets kicked. But oh, but, but dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. Scare him away. Beat his fucking face in. Gonna bother scaring him away. He he brought a knife. Brought a knife to a gunfight. Your arm gets cut up pretty bad, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. What the fuck? I mean, if you assault somebody with a knife or get in a knife fight, you're both going to end up getting cut. That's just how knives work. But yeah, crying your eyes out after? Come on, dude. <laughs> you won. You're a man. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Oh, that's, that's better for some reason. 1984. Plans to get kids have been waylaid by work. That's a mistake. I'll tell you right now. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth. Don't take it. I don't want to do it. I mean, honestly, I probably would just go with her. They're like, yeah, change of scenery, why not? Change of scenery is good for you. But in this in this instance, if I really don't want to move for whatever reason, I guess I'm fucking missing my legs or something like that. Yeah, don't take the job, baby. Don't do it. Don't do it. You tell her this means you two won't have a family. She says that's bullshit. She's totally right. She asks if her taking the job means you won't come with her. You say yes. Again. Bullshit. But she decides not to take it. See, I would have come with her. I would have been excited to go with her if it was uh, actually me in the story. Of course, I also wouldn't have cried after beating up a fucking mugger. Julie is asked to leave Boulder on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. What? An episode? 
She lost it. She like blew up, has bad temper, something like that. But she can go out and drink all night though, right? She didn't remember that she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Oh, I see. She's going crazy. She was found crying in the stairwell. Say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. Make macaroni and drink wine to forget about it. Yeah, let's let's go see somebody. If that'll make you feel better. Might make me feel better. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they're worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. We will keep that a secret for now. <clears throat> what a lovely night. What a day. What a lovely day. Hey, there's my journal. The only thing I can reach and I can't move, so I guess I'll pick up my journal. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of flexibility in this game, is there? Oh, there's me. I'm a He-Man. It also said something on that page. I'll probably pause and read it during editing. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. That's the good thing about an old dog. Puppies are cute, but old dogs are fucking where it's at, for sure. A week later, she goes back to university. All right, then. Julia's affliction gets worse, she can't remember things in class, her research is in shambles, she drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason, and has been brought home by the police. She is devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Damn. In 1987? That's the year I was born. Tell you what. So, if I arrived, then I'd arrive to a couple people with no job or something like that. Some days, you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. I mean, I'd prefer the stranger. Don't call, don't call my unborn child an idiot. Don't call me a fucking dope. She's just a bitch. <laughs> I'm glad she's going crazy. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I have a very different uh, outlook on these things than this game does. You tell her family they're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. Oh, they're from Australia! We're gonna go see that little cunt, I tell you what! <laughs> For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Worse and worse. You spend your days following Julie around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel. Daniel, the male nurse. What the fuck is that? He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. No, it fucking doesn't. This woman calls me a dope and my children idiots. You know what? Go. Go to the home, okay? See if daddy comes and visits you there, huh? Full-time care facility. Sorry, not sorry. There she go. There she is. Oh, God. What's happening now? I'm back in the woods. I don't know where I am. I'm lost. Help me. I guess I can't go that way. All right, then let's let's walking simulator the other way. Oh, it doesn't seem like I can walking simulator this way either. Maybe I'm supposed to go over that branch or over this rock. I don't know. This is one of those games that like uh, you don't really have too much control. Oh, there's a path. Don't worry, everybody. There's a path! I was a little worried, but th there is a path, in fact. Everybody just, just, uh, calm down. We can continue to walk through the woods and hear a tragic story about my, my wife and her abuses of me and my tragic, uh, my tragic backstory. Look, there's a deer! Wow! That will help me forget. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day, then every other week, and then every other month. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I'll cut your balls off. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. <laughs> That's right. Seclusion! Seclusion will fix all my ailments, yes! Just, uh, cut yourself off from the world, right? Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Are you gonna get married to Susan now? Is that how this is going? 
I don't like I don't like the the main character in this story either. I don't like anybody in this story so far. Months go by, Bucket dies. Oh, Bucket was the only character I liked in this story. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes a minute to lock on to you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. That'll get your mind off your seclusion and your dead dog and your crazy wife. Just, uh, get a job. Get a job! It's fine. Get a job! You take it. Hell yeah, I did. I took the shit out of that job. And, uh, that's how I became a, a Firewatch guy. For watching for fires. You know what I mean? There's my new home. Enter the lookout tower. Okay. I just might. In the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, friends. This has been the intro to Firewatch. Kind of interesting, um, but yeah, it leaves a little bit to uh, to be desired. I don't really like the characters so far, but who knows? Maybe we'll meet some characters that are even better told through uh, a little bit of text that is not completely linear. But yeah, we shall see. If you did enjoy this episode, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. We've also got links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. If you should enjoy supporting me on any of those, I would be extremely, extremely grateful. I'm extremely grateful to you just for watching this far. So thank you so much, you heroes. This has been Firewatch. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye bye Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.